I really love log cabins. They're one of my favorite traditional quilt blocks. And I've brought with me today a log cabin quilt. So this quilt is literally just log cabin blocks all stitched together and it gives that really lovely scrappy look to it. What I've done is I fussy cut the centers so we've got animals and flowers and they are the starting point of my log cabin and then I have just pieced strips around those centers to create the blocks and then joined all the blocks together to create the quilt. So log cabin blocks really are easy. There is a lot of cutting, but I have put together a cutting guide for you with a diagram so it's really easy to follow. And this is what we're going to be making today. Let's get started. First of all, you're going to need the cutting guide that I have prepared for you. And with this guide, first of all, you've got the diagram here of the log cabin block. It's not to scale, but it just gives you an indication of the sizes of the blocks and the order that they're going to be going in. They're all labeled. And also here, we've got the cutting guide, which tells you exactly which, si which block is going to be which size. I recommend taking a screenshot of, of it, particularly the cutting guide, because you'll be referring to that to cut your pieces out. Now, the other good thing about this is you can use this um, for coloring in uh, to get your fabric, fabric placement right. So before you commit to fabric, you can get it right on paper. Now we're actually going to be making a scrappy log cabin today, but there's a lot of fun you can have with light and shade. And I just wanted to show you a few examples. In this example here, I've got my central uh, contrasting color, and then I've got my dark fabrics on this side, and then I've got some lighter fabrics on this side. And this is a really popular uh, way to have the color placement because if you make multiple blocks of these and rotate them, you can get some really lovely secondary designs um, happening. And I really do recommend going on Pinterest or just Google images and type in log cabins and you will see what fantastic fun you can have with color placement and the log cabins, it's great. So I've got one more example to show you before we get going. Here I've got a uh, fussy cut block. Now you might remember the little moon. He was in the pincushion tutorial that I did last month. And it's quite fun to sometimes put a little creature, a little motif in the center. And then what I've done is I've alternated. So on this side, I've got the gray and the pink and the gray and the pink. And then on this side, I've got uh, a low volume print and then the turquoise, low volume, and then the turquoise. So that works really nicely as well. Now, what we're going to be doing is having a play this time just with fabric. So I'm going to start with some pink and rainbows, which I think is always a really good combination. And I'm just going to use about 10 or 12 different fabrics and just have a little play around with them and see what works. So this is my center and I'm just going to put three fabrics on each side to represent my log cabin. I'm just gonna have a little play. So these aren't cut at this point because at the moment we don't know where they're going. But what I quite like to do is make sure that um, I have the lighter colors um, in the middle and then with a darker print either side. So I'm just going to keep working on this. So add some little letters there. So again, I've got a solid color and then I've got the lighter background there. Uh, here, I've got some text print. So I'm going to be very intentional with this one. Um, I'm going to make sure my writing's the right way up. And if possible, I'm going to try and get that word playroom in, or maybe I could choose one of the other phrases on here. Um, you just need to be a little bit mindful with uh, directional prints because you wouldn't want that upside down, for example. Okay, and I'm just going to keep adding. So I'm doing three, three above, three below, and three either side. So that's a repeat one. And I always quite like to have a solid color on the edge, and I'm just gonna swap these two over 
because what I don't want is to have two greens on the edge when we're going for that scrappy look. So I'm quite pleased with that. I think that is working. So the first thing I'm going to do once I've got my fabric placement with um, the fabrics is to take a photo of them. That's really, really useful to refer back to because things can very easily move and get put in the wrong place and it's hard to always remember what you did. So take that photo and then I've put this cutting guide together and I've tried to make it as simple as possible. So we've got the alphabet here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, going around in a clockwise direction. And then we've got the corresponding size of the block here. So as you can see, my central square A is three and a half inches and I've cut that block here. Now, one thing that's really important to do when you've got lots of pieces like this that are all similar sizes is to label them. So I've just used a little scrap of paper. I've put A on there and then I've pinned it on. You can use binding clips, but it just means they don't fall off. OK, so I'm just going to keep going and I've cut mine already. So then I've got B, C, and you'll notice I've got the uh, nice, I've managed to fussy cut that word and then D, E, and I'm just going to keep going until I've cut out all of my block. Okay, so now we're on to the fun bit, we're going to get stitching. So I've got, we're going to start at the centre, I've got my central block A, and I've got my block B, just going to take these tags off, and all I'm going to do is put B right sides together, you can put a pin in if you want to. And I'm just going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam down here. And then I'm going to open it up and press it. So I'm going to go and do that now. So here we have um, my A section, my central section here. I've stitched on my B section. And just referring to my diagram, I've now got section C coming underneath the two. So I'm going to take section C. Now with this one, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful and make sure I get it the right way up because I've got the text. So I'm going to be putting it right sides together this way, quarter of an inch seam, and then ironing out like that. So now I've joined on section C. I've got my wording the right way up, luckily, that was good. And I'm just going to keep going now. I'm going in a clockwise direction. So in exactly the same way, I'm going to add on D. Then I'm going to add on E, F, and I'm just going to keep going until I've completed the block. And here we have the finished log cabin block. So as you know, we just went round and we kept on going until we got our 12 and a half inch block. And then when that's sewn into a quilt, it will be 12 inches. Um, one thing I noticed when I was making this block is it came together really quickly. And as each strip got longer and you were just sewing down one strip at a time, it uh, suddenly really started to take shape. So that's really, really satisfying. Most of the work in this block is in the cutting. And then when it comes to piecing it, it comes together really quickly. So I'm really pleased with that. I've got my fabrics the right way up. I've got my playroom fussy cut words there. I've got my central rainbows in the middle. And I've 